What's up, folks? I am fresh back from Worlds and totally high on optimism for X-Wing and the broader universe as a whole. Um, and on that note, I wanted to go ahead and start with this photo because it's an X-Wing ship, and this ship in particular is an A-Wing, which is one of my favorites. But, but the point I want to make here is that there is something magical about X-Wing ships. That's one of the big reasons we keep coming back to the game. It's one of our favorite things about the universe. Starships, starfighters, and the stuff we all kind of know and love, either from recent experience or from growing up with them, or like with our dads. Um, I love the A-Wing. I love the bomber. TIE Interceptor was my first love. Uh, but the reason I'm showing all these is I wanted to highlight that and kind of really hammer home how it is near impossible to be a Star Wars fan without loving the ships. Um, and I bring that up because I want to break down Atomic Mass Games, their actual record of stewardship with X-Wing as since they've run it, uh, and then kind of what they've done up to now, and then where we go from here. So talking about kind of the future of X-Wing as I personally see it based on the path I've seen so far and kind of where we could go next. So just to talk about the history really quick, the current edition of X-Wing is X-Wing 2.5. It is technically second edition, but with a total revamp of the rule set that is now affectionately dubbed 2.5 as per AMG. So just kind of looking at the X-Wing game, launched as a first version under Fantasy Flight Games, was then revamped into a second version or 2.0 by Fantasy Flight Games again, and then went straight headlong into the pandemic in 2020, which pretty much canned all in-game play anywhere ever. Um, and so we don't know exactly what happened to X-Wing. We do know that in-person play dried up and probably a lot of sales went down. There's a lot of black box there that we don't know. But what we do know is that start of 2020, uh, it was, I think, a week before the first Adepticon that I was going to go to. I got my tickets in 2019. I was ready to go. I was practically loaded in the car. And then the pandemic hit, and then Adepticon canceled basically right when we had to decide whether or not we were going to try to go anyway. Um, so missed it in 2020. Better choice, all told. But uh, yeah. And then in less than a year, at the end of 2020, there was the official announcement that FFG, Fantasy Flight Games, the current runner of the game was handing it off to their studio, Atomic Mass Games, or AMG. Um, there was a lot of consternation about this. People really didn't understand why, and there was, of course, wild speculation. We don't know why. Um, but all of the Star Wars franchise games, or all of the miniatures games, were passed over to Atomic Mass Games because Atomic Mass Games does specialize in miniatures games, which they'd really gotten into with their Marvel Crisis Protocol, their Marvel-based tabletop miniatures game. Uh, so, Atomic Mass Games took over X-Wing, they very quickly jumped into the community and assured us they were going to do a great job, and they worked really, really hard to communicate, right? They just sent us all kinds of information all the time, talking about their process, talking about what they were looking to do with the release of a revamped rule set for X-Wing, because they talked about wanting to support the current community, wanting to build it back up after the pandemic, and really rebuild it in a way that is more approachable to new players. Now, a lot of the current player base was kind of upset about that last part in particular, um, because how could you not be new player friendly? How dare you say that about our game? But something that's really, really important to note about X-Wing, both 1.0 and 2.0, is both of those games had a box starter set that was about $40, got all the materials you needed to play the game, but it gave you a defunct rule book that didn't actually teach you how to play the game, didn't give you enough dice to fully play the game, and then also gave you a simple dogfight, a straight head-to-head -head fight between one X-Wing and two TIE Fighters. To sum up, if somebody came to this knowing nothing, they didn't know about the community, they just love Star Wars and love Star Wars ships, they pick up this box because it looks cool, they will have a miserable experience. And that may not be the case for everyone, I don't want to speak for everyone, but on the whole, the starter set for 1.0 that was then basically carbon copied for 2.0 sucked. Just going to call it out there. The one X-Wing and two TIE Fighters was a badly designed starter. It was not even close to the complete game, didn't have the correct rules or resources, and it relied on so many different things that just weren't going to expand and grow. But the single biggest thing is, like, if you have a game like this, you want it to be successful, you want it to grow, you need a starter set that is representative and will draw people in and have them do more. So that is one of the key things that had to happen, and that's one of the things that AMG was looking at when they were looking at new player friendliness. So what do you need before you release a box set, right? You want to make sure that your rules are established and that they're firm and that they're good enough. Let's see what I've got here in my next slide. 
Ooh, well. Yeah. So the first thing that Atomic Mass Games did after 2022 was they really hammered out a new rule set. That is their 2.5. They worked it out. Um, and here the communication hit kind of a, a tough spot. So in the early days, Atomic Mass Games communicated a lot with X-Point players. They put out information all the time um, and got pretty much destroyed publicly by the vocal parts of the community that were upset about the change. And what we saw was that then they pulled back and stopped giving us anywhere near the level of information that they were giving before, which was really quite sad. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so we'll go ahead and skip to that slide because that slide is quite distracting. So what we saw was they released a new rule set, but going back to kind of the business strategy behind that, right? So they released a new rule set. They engaged the current com community while they were doing that, saying this is why we're doing this. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. And it was a very good faith effort that showed the way they planned to approach X-Wing moving forward. And they were very clear they didn't want to just fix it up and then be done with it. They wanted to have it be healthy for a very long time including continued releases, which they had said several times. Um, but yeah, so if you're going to revamp the box set and bring in the in-the-door, bring the uh, starter set in-the-door new customer experience up, you have to set the rules first. So they redesigned the rule set from the ground up. They tested it out. They tried out a bunch of different things. And we actually saw several iterations where some of the rough edges were taken out. In the original version, for example, you could score objectives in round one which really heavily advantaged the list that could really get out there and grab stuff quickly, especially the very fast list that could grab a crate for the salvage mission and run. Any ship, there was just this huge arms race to grab objectives turn one, and it was unhealthy for the game. So Atomic Mass Games tweaked it, so you cannot score points until turn two, which is dramatically healthier for the game and is the current state it is now. Similarly, the rules for hitting rocks, the rules for bumping, all of those were kind of introduced and then refined before the final version was done. And once it was done, we then had the, what we got here? Yeah. Uh, we had the rules and organized play. We have this wonderful website. So we are here on the timeline, right? So the new 2.5 was released in 2022, in March of 2022. Um, a full two years after Atomic Mass Games took over and started really deeply looking at the design of the game. And so now we have this very detailed set of information this list of documents has been growing and evolving over time and has also been uh, expanding. So you've got the different missions and then there's tournament regulations and we're starting to see more side events and more side things come out as well, um, which has been pretty cool. And during that time, in addition to releasing the new rules, Atomic Mass Games released a couple things that were kind of final projects from Fantasy Flight Games. So we saw things like the Rogue Class Starfighter for a big one. We saw the... Uh, Republic Z95s come out, and these were things that had to be designed in the context of the new rule set. And every single release we've seen since has been designed with the context of the new rule set. So they could not put together full boxes and full design of ships until after the rules were fully established and those rules were printed in rules booklets and put into the starter sets. Now, uh, then they also went ahead and let me check that actually. Let me see where we are here. It was, and I'm losing track of the timeline here because so much has happened and it's been kind of a, a funny path, right? So in, I believe, the last year and a half, we finally saw a brand new Atomic Mass Games website, which we're looking at right now, and then we saw these. This is the new Faction Starter Pack for Empire. We got one of these for Rebel and one of these for Empire. Is It has the rulebook in it. It has all the resources you need. Let me actually check and see if it mentions the number of dice. I wonder if they have pictures of this in here. Excuse me. Okay, so this is funny. So it still only includes four of each color of dice, I think. So that is uh, somewhat annoying. Yeah, eight dice. But, I mean, you can just re-roll a couple if you end up going up to the max six, which, you know, that's the thing. Um, but yes, so it's got the rules in there, and you can see that that is maybe is as little as one expansion away from a fully playable squad, where you could have an entire current 20 point legal squad out of this box whereas before you had to get you had the two of the cheapest ships in the entire imperial faction two just plain old tie fighters and then one x-wing so you had so much length to go to actually compete in a full-size game it wasn't starter plus one it was starter plus question mark maybe eight um 
Yeah, so this is such a better entry point, especially because the rulebook is better, it's better organized, it's better cleaned up, the selection of ships is better, so if you play a starter game, even if you play Bomber Tie versus Tie Advanced and Tie, it's not balanced, um, but if you did that, it's a much better game than playing one X-Wing versus two ties, just because you have more options, more stuff, um, and the two are actually probably going to get there, or get somewhere in the game, especially if you also have missions, where you can actually play for things other than just killing each other, which makes killing each other more interesting, <laughs> but then also just gives you different win conditions, so even if you're down, even if you lose all of your ships, if you played the mission well, you could still come out ahead. So you always feel like you have some agency, you have some way to win, and it just is a more very complex game to play for someone who's coming into it brand new. So let's just kind of recap here. So the company rebuilt their website. In addition to rebuilding the website, they also launched an official Discord. Now launching a Discord is very hard. It's a huge amount of labor to do this right, especially in a way that meets, meets corporate approval. You've got full-time employees moderating, you've got somebody setting up the whole thing, and it's a big risk because you open yourself up to direct communication with the community and after what happened the first time they did that, I am very impressed with the company that they did continue to do that. So, so let's recap. So let's actually kind of put this all together and talk about where we are now. So we have a totally revamped rule set. We have a brand new website and communication platform where information can easily be, easily be accessed. Up to this point, Atomic Mass Games had put things on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, not always consistently in the same places, so I would actually have to dig around for announcements, where now I know two different places I can check every single time I want to find the news, and I can get updates on it, which is phenomenal. So communication has tightened up and cleaned up dramatically. We're getting somewhat less, but we'll get there. Um, so here we are, brand new rule set, new communication platform, fresh dedication from the corporate owner or the company running the game that we should see more of it in the future. And then we've even see some, seen some interesting things come out too. Like we saw a beta test of a Rebox. We saw the TIE Bomber expansion come out, which is a re-release of an older model, just so you've got refreshed models and you've got some new cards. It's a very new player friendly expansion and also has the standardized loadouts that are a really nice thing to offer returning players. So you just kind of look at the design philosophy behind that. It's very much it is set up for new and existing players to get equal value out of it, which is phenomenal. It's priced well, it's a very efficiently packaged, and it's very um, store owner friendly as well. It's very shelf friendly. And just to rewind for a bit, when we had 1.0, there was a breakneck pace of releases. There were boxes coming out all over the place. Um, and then they already sat on shelves. So looking way back, just kind of checking the market, if you went to any store that stocked X-Wing, they had just a wall of X-Wing expansions that didn't move. They sat there. Even as healthy as the game was, as active as it was, you got just so many returning players who just didn't need the stuff there, so they didn't buy it. So retailers were stuck with this giant backlog of inventory that just got worse when 2.0 came out, and then they had to figure out what to do with their 1.0 stuff. And then when 2.5 came out, they still had these blisters of stuff that they didn't necessarily know how to move. Um, and so most every retailer that I knew about and that I visited and checked a lot of them divested completely of X-Wing. They just didn't stock it anymore. And so looking back at where Atomic Mass Games took over X-Wing, we have stores not stocking the product anymore. We have a starter set that players can't really play well or doesn't reflect the game well. And then we have a starter set that doesn't really encourage people to keep going with the game. So those are really big kind of economic issues they had to get because we're looking at a bit of a player crash in 2020 with the pandemic. They're looking at not only how to salvage that, but also, also how to continue the growth moving forward. So then looking at where we are now, starter set is fixed. Rules are, I believe, fixed, and at least they were redesigned with a very careful eye and they're constantly looking to tweak and improve them. And they have the information in the starter set to guide people to the rules documents online so if they want to stay current and look for rules updates, they will be able to find it, which is also really, really important. Number three, we have really good, clean avenues of communication, which is very important for continuing to grow and support and build the community, the current community, and then also the future community. Uh, and then of course we have, I think I already said this, but then we have those box starter sets, hugely important starter sets, one for Rebellion, one for Empire. And they're the two most iconic, most well-known factions in the game. Somebody walks in a store, they see X-Wing ships, like, oh man, I know those X-Wings and TIE Fighters. Um, so to start with those was a really good play. 
And it was a very, very smart economic move because that's a box that's very easy for retailers to move. So they launched that box. And then when they launched that box, they started to see retailers stock it again, where they keep at least one or two of both starter sets, Rebel and Empire, on the shelf. Very easy on the shelf space. They do sell really great lead to get people interested in the game and to help to start kind of booking some shelf space for later releases. Um, in that on the same launch window as well, we also saw the re-release of the TIE Bomber I just mentioned, and then the YT2400, the Outrider. Two key things about that. Number one, the Bomber was re-releasing an older ship to see if people bought it, and they did. Number two was releasing the YT2400 and seeing if people bought it, and they did too. But the YT2400 was as much a beta test of a rebox strategy as anything. So they're testing the waters, testing their um, manufacturers, their distributors, testing the new reboxing style they did, testing to see if there's still a market for the older stuff, and then testing to see if the starter sets sell. <laughs> So this is where we start, and then they've kind of done this, and then we have some card packs, some trickle stuff, some little stuff that's easy to keep the community going, give us kind of new stuff there for a little while, while they wait and see if the product they're releasing will move. So we are one year on from that, and this takes us to Worlds and the comments that happened this weekend. So this past weekend, Will Schick, the lead of uh, Atomic Mass Games, led both an AMG developer panel, and then also at the world championship of each of, of Atomic Mass Games' individual games, they had a partner that was streaming those games live all weekend. So they had Gold Squadron for X-Wing, they had someone for MCP, Armada, Shatter... or not Armada, well, maybe Armada, I don't know. Um, Shattered Point and um, Legion. So all of their games, they had different streamers. And Will Schick, the head of AMG, took a moment to sit down with each of those streamers while they were live to do a quick update on the game and kind of talk about his promises for the future. Now, it was very vague, but one thing that Will Schick said that really stuck out in the X-Wing bit, which we'll see at some point when Cold Squadron posts the Day 2 video, if they do, uh, was that he said, Phase 1 was to expand the player base, and Phase 1 has been a success. So looking back at all that they did with the reboxing, re-releasing old chips, re-releasing the starter sets, renegotiating with vendors and retailers to convince them to restock this thing and talk about how they're going to do that, um, that is what we could look at as phase one. To use kind of a fun X-Wing reference, that's their turn zero. That's their setup. That is what they've, they've done. Um, and then we could look at the starter sets as their turn one. They're one straight. They're one straight to victory where they did a, a easy, soft experiment that wouldn't cost much, um, relatively. That would be a really good test to see if the market was there to continue. And so the comment that Will Schick made was, again, that phase one has been a success. And then in the developer panel... He was asked outright after um, Shatterpoint and Legion previews, he was asked if we were going to hear any news about X-Wing. It wasn't on the schedule. We all kind of assumed X-Wing wouldn't be there, but a lot of us, including myself, were in that panel hoping to hear more. And Will Schick looked completely shocked and said, there will not be anything about X-Wing in this panel, but of course, very much leaned on the of course, there will be an update forthcoming soon. Which, of course, we kind of assumed. When it was taken out of that panel, we assumed that we would hear the news somewhere else as well. Um, it still is a little bit head-scratching. The update wasn't there. But there's one kind of key difference we have to consider here. So we're looking at Marvel Crisis Protocol, Legion, Shatterpoint. Shatterpoint is new, so it doesn't count. But for both Marvel Crisis Protocol and Legion, those games have been fundamentally unchanged since their launch. They have never had a version 2.0. They've never had a, a revision in the middle. No 2.0, no 2.5. They've had kind of slight rules revisions here and there, but nothing as dramatic as what X-Wing has seen. X-Wing has seen a tumultuous up and down of different kinds of product, reboxes and re-releases. They did the launch, for the move from 1.0 to 2.0, and it basically drove away the community and retailers at the same time. Um, you would argue that the most dedicated community players were really, really into 2.0, and some people loved it so much that they've chosen not to pick up 2.5, which is fine. That's your choice. But from a economic sort of company perspective, from a new player perspective, from even a veteran player perspective, the game was fairly unhealthy at that point. Um, and it's really important to kind of look at the backstory of why. It wasn't anything fundamentally wrong with 2.0. It was some of the fundamental flaws of 1.0's market strategy that kind of carried with it. So that kind of shows why they had to completely sweep this all away and start over a very methodical, very measured approach that included that market test of the new starter sets. 
I had gone into this going, assuming I would stick straight to facts, but I have gotten into a bit of speculation here, not looking into kind of the motivations of the team or how much they do like ships and space battles or not. I don't care. Um, one thing that's always come out of the Atomic Mass Games team every single time is they have an absolute passion for game design. They love their players. They love their communities. They love their games. And they love Star Wars, which is adorable to see company leaders be able to express something like a love of Star Wars. And going back to our slide number one, I don't think that there's a way to fundamentally love Star Wars without loving Star Wars ships. And so they have stewardship of this incredible game that has built these amazing international communities and led these really fun international tournaments. And they, I think personally, are the exact people I would want to steward this because they're taking a very measured approach to make sure they do this right. So that when they start putting out those big releases, it will be well received and it will be equally accessible to new players as it is to returning players. That's about where we are. So those are the two comments. Phase one was to build the player base. Phase one is complete. And then there will be an update forthcoming soon. Now going again to some of the other stuff I talked about, This starter set and the Rebel one were released in the end of May of 2023. So less than a year ago. We're about two months out before the one year anniversary of the starter sets being launched. My full assumption is that they had a corporate goal, a corporate company goal of doing a one year pilot with these starter sets to see kind of what happened, how it went in the market, and then to go from there and then decide if their next steps were going to go or not. Now, a lot of people would say like, well, that's stupid. Of course, they knew it was going to be successful. But really, they didn't. Because again, I've talked to several times about the different details that made the market hit of 1.0 and 2.0 pretty strange and not terribly effective in some really important ways in terms of selling a product. Um, so that's one of the reasons why it was treated so much differently in terms of how it's been repackaged and re-put on the shelves. Because there have been legitimate logistical challenges with getting this stuff stocked and moving in stores, which is what they need to have the game continue and be healthy. Um, I looked at this recently and just kind of go on a, a quick kind of side tangent here. There are a lot of members of the X-Wing community who seem to believe that we, the most vocal, most active members of the community, are the majority of players, which there is not a single miniatures game out there of this scale where that is true. Just to say it. Just to talk about Warhammer 40k, one of the biggest, most established, and well-known miniatures games out there, there is an active community base, but if you take, uh, I believe Goonhammer did a rough estimate the other day, where even a very low estimate of players across the world puts players of Warhammer, or purchasers of Warhammer, at about 3 million. Whereas, um, if you look at the largest Reddit on, the largest subreddit on Reddit, what is it, uh, R... Warhammer 40k, the Warhammer 40k subreddit, they're just under 800,000 members, just under 800,000, so less than a million. So less than a third of the total estimate player base, even a low player base, is part of that subreddit, let alone active in that subreddit, because of course the active members are a much smaller slice. So when we think about our podcasters, we talk about our tournament players, our effective players, we are just a tiny drop in the bucket compared to the total market for a game like this. And if we want it to be healthy and continue a long time for us, we do really want to make sure that it is approachable and healthy for the rest of the people. The kitchen table gamers, the beer and pretzel gamers, the grandmother who buys her grandson uh, this starter set because it looks really cool. Um, we want people to be picking this box up and trying it out all over the world all the time, whether or not they go to our local store champ. That's a point I really wanted to hammer home because we keep talking about things as if we have the total perspective and we just don't. The only people that know how these products are selling in mass worldwide are the people who make them and watch the sales numbers. So if Will Schick says phase one has been a success, it's probably been a success. Um, and I see every reason why it would be because there were always people who wanted to try out the original starter set. But again, it was just very difficult to get into, difficult to like, and then difficult to go on to next steps if you did like it. So we've already seen a bit of the future, right? So. I'm going to go ahead and call the shot here. I think that on the year anniversary of this launch of the starter sets, the Rebel and Imperial starter sets, we will start to see the other five faction starter sets. And I'm going to go ahead and guess that um, we're about to see a true wave one launch 
that like we saw from 1.0 from Atomic Mass Games. So I would bet that we see a starter set that will include customized loadouts, standardized loadouts, and probably four ships, give or take, um, for each of the other five factions. That will be a starter point or starting point for every single, any single new player to jump in with any single faction. So you can mix and match any two starter sets and have two players able to play a complete game against each other out of the box, which is massive. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. I think within by the end of 2024, we will have all seven faction starter sets, and then we will start seeing releases of individual ship launches. Now, one thing we know about the individual ship launches is for small bases, they're almost all going to be double blisters. That's something we heard ages ago. I don't remember when, but I'm fairly certain that's that's committed. So like the Rogue, the New Z95, the Bomber all came in a two-pack. Uh, we may not always see it be the same chassis in two copies, but I am willing to bet that every single small base we're going to see will be at least two models per box, which will also will help kind of build out people's squads, but will also really help retailers not have that big backlog on the shelf. So worst case, one person buys one and they split it between two players. It's fine. At least the boxes were bought where before one or neither would have been bought. So I think we're going to see that. I think we're about to see a breakneck pace because we've seen the roadmaps that AMG does. We saw what Legion and uh, Shatterpoint are getting. They're getting a release every single month. Um, and I'm also willing to bet that while Atomic Mass Games was redesigning the 2.5 rule set, they were also designing the rules for all of these ships and pilots in the starter packs concurrently, all together all at once, so that when they got to the point where they had the rule set, where they had all of the starters out, they were all on roughly equal footing. So we're going to see that, I'm calling it, by the end of 2024, all seven starter sets for each individual faction, a roadmap of releases going well into 2025, and then probably several different releases in addition to the starters by the end of the year. I'm going ahead and calling that because they've done their market test, they've done their prep work, they've done the roadmap, they've done the backend design. All of that is speculation, but based on the way they work with all of their other games, that seems very clear that's the direction they're going. And based on the way they behaved up to now, you can see how that is different because of how they were treating the situation with X-Wing different than it is with MCP, Legion, or Shatterpoint. That is my TED Talk. Thank you for coming and enjoying this. Well, thank you for coming. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of extra optimism about X-Wing. I'm very, very excited to see where this goes. It really feels like a very methodical, very thorough approach to launching a very stable game that can last for a long time, even under a breakneck pace of ship releases. So. We'll see. Um, I saw somebody on Reddit when I posted a, a quick version of this. They went ahead and said that, um, oh, what did they say? They did an automatic reminder in one year. So you know what? Set up your automatic reminder. Set a calendar event. Say, in a year, check back on this YouTube video and see if this guy was full of it. We'll find out together. Appreciate the time. Till next time.